you come up against legal and practical issues every day. QuickCall gives you direct access to our team of specialist education advisors. Your queries will be resolved quickly and with certainty of cost. As most secondary schools will be aware, 2012's English GCSE results were not what had been anticipated, with most students achieving grades well below their predicted grades. We discussed the issue with several schools after the event and it became apparent to us that there had been an issue with grading. In particular, the grade boundaries applied in June were different than those that had been applied in January. That being the case, why did the challenge brought by a consortium of 150 local authorities, schools and pupils fail? Primarily, it's because the decision of a public body, although it may be unfair, is often not open to challenge. There are three broad bases on which public bodies' decisions can be challenged. Firstly, that the decision is in some way inherently unlawful. Secondly, that the process which led to the decision being made was unfair and therefore resulted in an unfair decision. Or thirdly, that the decision was so irrational that no rational public body would have reached the same decision. In this case, the court found that Ofqual's decision was rational. This is because Ofqual have got a duty to ensure that exam standards year on year remain consistent. They felt that if they allowed the June grade boundaries to remain the same as the January grade boundaries, 2012's GCSE results would not be comparable to 2011's. Accordingly, the court said that the decision that they took was reasonable when taking into account that obligation on them. However, what this decision has done is encourage the government to think again about modular exams. They remain convinced that modular exams were part of the problem here and what made grading so difficult. Accordingly, it's likely they'll press ahead with their decision to abolish modular exams in GCSEs.